Hi, this is Justin. I wanted to show you the entrance to my house. This is a, a print of a painting by David Hockney. I'm very fond of it. And over on the other side of the wall are some photographs that have been taken of me over the years by friends. This is myself and Dave Bridges. There are people that I've spoken to who swear they remember things at six months or nine months or twelve months. And I, find, I find that hard to believe. You know, my first memories, as far as I can tell, go back to around age three. And one of them is that I painted my neighbor's garage a beautiful sky blue color that I had found in a can. And of course, I did it with my neighbor's little son both painting. We couldn't really reach that high, but we got on boxes and we painted the inside and the outside and we used all the paint. Up. Coterminous with that somehow is also the memory of my sister Fran being born. And we had no idea how the kids were born. That wasn't discussed in my house. The baby just appeared. There would be a baby coming. Maybe that would be mentioned. You know, probably not. But all of a sudden there would be a new baby in the house. And in this case, I had heard something in the next room. It was in my parents' room when I went in. I lived in Petersburg, Virginia. At the time, I remember the house. It was a wooden, white, clabbered house. And I went into the room and it was dark and I heard this noise and I a little scratching and I looked over and there was a crib and I looked through the bars and there was a little baby that was my sister Fran. She had just come home from the hospital. Everybody's a little older, you know, there's my mom, she's getting on, there's my sister Fran, she's very cosmopolitan, my sister Judy, the little girl in the dress, and look at Meg, she's up there, she's now a teenager too, just a year or two younger than Mike, so... I had six brothers and sisters, there were seven of us, there were nine children altogether, two died in childbirth, we found out later. But I grew up with six brothers and sisters, I had three brothers and I had three sisters, and in fact my brothers are, my brother Art, who is a professor of English out in Minnesota, my the brother Jimmy, who, who is now retired, but was in the admissions office up at Harper College, uh, and my brother Michael, who is uh, in some heavy computing at University of Pittsburgh, so all three of my brothers are in the academic world to some degree. My sisters all worked. My sister Fran was a legal secretary. She's about to retire now. My sister Judy worked with the deaf and the blind, and my sister Meg is a grade school teacher and a wonderful one too. So all my brothers and sisters are involved in it. My parents were good parents. And I would say they were probably the best way to describe them is that they were dedicated. They worked very hard to make sure that we did well in the world. Um, my dad worked at you know, two jobs. He was in two military services and he was in the Army Reserve. He was a colonel. So he could make some money by going to reserve meetings and he was also a captain in the Federal Merchant Marine. So, he was a busy man, but that money put the kids through schools because all of the kids except for myself went to parochial schools, which cost money, and also through private colleges. My mother worked from the crack of dawn up, you know, uh, and it, it, it just didn't stop. She just kept going. She had no help. She had the, the you know, seven kids, and she made sure they were fed, bathed clothes and every other thing that in fact the mother has to do. I think that they got that kind of dedication which is staggering. I can look at it now from my own position as a parent because their parents were also extremely dedicated but in a very strange way. Both my mother and my father didn't have a father or he was absent. My 
father's mother died shortly after childbirth and his father died shortly after that of cancer. And luckily in the meantime he had married a second woman who it took to raising my father after my father's father died of cancer. And she did a good job. She wanted him to be a priest. He didn't quite you make it to that point because he met my mother. I don't think that was his calling anyway, but he went into the army, which was pretty close, for a lot of reasons. It had that monastic quality to it, the army. And, but she was a hard driver, his mother, and she wanted him to do well. And there was nothing that she wouldn't do for him. My mother's mother was in the same vein, uh, but she had a much harder job. She had to raise seven children, with my mother being the oldest. Uh, five boys and another girl. Her father, my mom's father, was very mysterious about why he disappeared, but he did. And there was something he did that was very bad. We don't know what it was. Sometimes he was just described as a heavy drinker. You know, as I've become older, a little closer to the grave, as they say, I've started to think a little bit about how I like to be remembered. There's no way to change how I'll be remembered by people, really. I mean, my kids have their own picture of me, and the people that I've lived with, my former wives and friends, whatever, they pretty much have a fixed picture and there's nothing really you can do about that. That's basically what happens in life is people have memories of you. But if I had my druthers, if in some way I could kind of influence that in some way, I'd like to be remembered as somebody who always honored the truth, who tried to tell the truth, both in his personal life and also in his art. You know, I think if you don't do that, you're kind of wasting your time in life. You're not really doing what you should do. The truth is beautiful, and what is beautiful is true. You know, Keith said that, and it's really true about the way you approach life. If you honor the truth, then your life and the work that you do will have some substance to it and some beauty. So that's why I think that honoring the truth has been important to me. It's an instinct. I can see why it's one that has been honored by many, many, many kids. You know, I wanted to make this video not so much for my own kids. They know who I am or they have a pretty good picture, nor for my brothers and sisters. They have a pretty good picture of who I am, you know. But down the road, two or three, four, four generations, there's nobody going to have a memory of me at all. I like sometimes to, to think if I had something like this of my grandfather's or my grandfather's grandfather so I could reach back and touch them. Not the facts and the figures, but to, but to feel who they were and to feel there was some kind of emotional link between myself and them. To have some little kid in the future look at this who found it in his closet or his father's closet, some great, great, great something and put it in the DVD player and say, wow, look at this guy. He's my great, great, great uncle. You know, to have that touch I want that, and I think that's what my great-grandkids and great-grandnephews and nieces would like, just to touch somebody. That's what I'd like it to be, just a touching point.